Otto Kekkonen and Conor Manon captured the Delano Polo Award for the Round of France. There are six cars that are going to start at the rear of the field due to causing avoidable collisions during the Round of England. Packer, Carroll, and Conor Matthew, Matthias Taub, Charlie Waters, Tom Delgado, Christian Hans, and Ian Cooper. Also, Kurt Pliskin and Anthony Griffith were both suspended from this race. Powersting Incorporated has replaced them with Libby Bell and Jacques Bouvier. Bouvier qualified very well. Libby Bell has not shown a whole lot of speed this weekend. Peter Keyes, the owner of Team Sar USA, has insisted that TM Master Cup Series officials are ignoring manufacturer teams to the detriment of the series. According to Keyes, the manufacturers are at a disadvantage to the privateer teams. Judging by the officialdom, I don't think that's actually the case. However, he might be talking about the Kayala Grand Prix, which is next month. Speaking of Kayala, there's going to be a brand new team running that race with their own car. Manticore Engineering is supposedly building their own car for the Kayala Grand Prix, and they will reportedly use some of the Colton Morel Altez test data and a Hodges Walter engine. On top of that, they will have Eric Bolander, who was spectacular there last year, and Alexis Rainsford, of all people, driving for them. Rainsford drives a Colton Morel powered car in Champ Car. Eric Bolander is leading the Swedish Touring Car Championship, driving a Colton Morel. So that's how Manticore was able to secure their driving lineup. Anyway, Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Here at Circuit Thierry Sikot, Adrian Devereaux is on the outside of the front row. He is definitely the hometown favorite. I can't stress how much of a hometown favorite he is. I've seen more blue and orange uh, gear among the fans than just about uh, anything else, really. Uh, Arto Kakinen is going to take the lead, though, but he's not going to clear Devereaux in the one car. Now, uh, Adrian Devereaux in, this, in car number one, of course, uh, largely responsible, we believe, for getting this track on the calendar. This is a former Formula A circuit, and the reason it dropped, was dropped from Formula A is because of some of the uh, sudden elevation changes and that ditch right there that you saw Arto Kekken it hit. Oh, that was close. Arto Kekken almost got into a huge collision, but avoided a crash with his uh, one of his nemeses on the track. Now, Davina Henton gets into Yami no Tenshi. Tenshi goes off the course along with Carlos Sanzello in the 21 car. That's one of the independent trophy cars in the field. Let's have another look at that. And it looks like Henton just loses the back end, comes to save it, but Tenshi was, had a huge head of steam, and they just made contact, though. There's really nothing anyone could have done about that. Henton, on the other hand, though, just gets a bit of a understeer, pushes up the track, and into the right across the nose of Zelda Ashby, takes herself off the track and out of the race on the first lap. Here's Adrian Devereaux in car number one. There's some of those sudden elevation changes that uh, were added uh, about 15 years ago. And uh, some people don't really like them, but uh, TM Master Cup Series cars have been catching air on them. Uh, there haven't been too many instances I can think of of anyone actually doing that, but uh, looks like we got through there okay. Now here's in the back of the field. The green car is Chris Allen, Independence Trophy car. On the, on the right, Charlie Waters in the 30 car comes flying across the outside, cuts, off Morgan, cuts across Morgan Hamburg into the back of the 71 car and takes the 71 of Chris Allen off the track and out of the race. Uh, before half of one lap is completed. Now, Charlie Waters has been whining in the press about how the officials are biased against him, but when you make moves like this, pinching two cars, trying to go three, trying to pinch a move like that, you deserve a time penalty. In fact, there are some people that are saying that Charlie Waters should have been fined for those comments. I believe he has, but when you do moves like that in the first lap, come on! Give people some more racing room. Here's Jacques Bouvier driving for Power Steering Incorporated in the 08 car in place of Anthony Griffith. Platform Media wanted an experienced driver, and PSI gave Anthony Griffith a bit of a say as to who his replacement would be, and it was Jacques Bouvier, and that appears to have been a pretty good job. Bouvier has been helping that team a lot this weekend. The third Frenchman in the race is Rene Recamier, driving for Majestic Motorsports, the home team here in the Gastonier. He's running in fourth place, a fantastic qualifying effort from the Frenchman. This is what we saw, uh, saw in him in his Arla campaign. He's getting some challenge, a pretty serious challenge from Scott Stoidler. Rekimir has been driving the wheels off this car in his home race so far. It's not the quickest car on the racetrack, and he's done a good job just to get it to fourth and qualifying. A lot of people are expecting him to go uh, sort of slide towards the back a little bit, but he's holding off Stoidler in the Tremwell pretty well so far. Here's Dan McKay and Craig Mummert racing hard. Mummert goes off the road. Does he slow it down in time? Nope, no, no. Contact Mummert and McKay go off the track. And uh, that was... Uh, bit of a silly error there. Eight, um, <clears throat> well, they gave Craig Mummert a time penalty for that move. Uh, they said that was avoidable. 
I'm not too sure about that one there. Marcus Leonard goes out very early on with an engine failure in the Xenos. He had a great start to this race, uh, Marcus Leonard, but uh, obviously just not meant to be. It's sort of been emblematic of his whole year so far. Here's Mika Turbo and Scott Bates. They're racing pretty hard for eighth place. Now, they I'm not sure if they made contact there. I don't think they did. And if so, contact wasn't what set the 88 car off. Looked like Scott Bates tried to give the 20 car some racing room, but he gave him just a bit much and went off the road. Now, here we are on board with Scott Bates. We're going to have a better look at this. There's the 20 car there. They might have just made contact, but that wasn't... Looked like Bates saw him right there, tried to give him a bit more room, and just took himself off the road. That's a very unfortunate mistake for Scott Bates to have made, and very unlike him. He's usually one of the uh, drivers you don't see making uh, too many errors on the racetrack, but it happens to everybody, it looks like. Lap 4 of 30 is uh, in the books. Adrian Devereaux is in the lead. Ron starting lap 4, excuse me. Arto Kakinen, uh, Michael Sykes, Leonard Roderick. Looks like Reckemir has fallen to Michael Sy or to Scott Soindler, excuse me. Martinez in the 7 car made a great start. In the cats of Luciano Stavro, car number three, did not get a very good qualifying run. Zach Duff up there in 15th place. And Packer Carroll hanging on the outside of the points. VJ Pushanda up to 17th place. Wow, great start for Pushanda in the Tutino, punching well above his weight in that car so far in the round of France. Adrian Devereaux, though, still in the lead of the race. He doesn't have a very comfortable lead, though. Beginning of lap five. Now here's Arto Kekin beginning to challenge him. Devereaux sees him in his mirrors, gives him plenty of room. Devereaux and Kekin and now they have a. Here they come down the straightaway into turn two. A sudden puncture on Devereaux's car. Arto hits him in the back and Devereaux goes off the course. Problems with car number one. Devereaux goes out from the lead of the race. He's not out of the race, but because he gets that car refired and brings it back to the pit lane. But that was a sudden puncture on the one car. That was just a sudden tire blowout. Now he gets it sideways. Real, all real suddenly, and Arto has nowhere to go but right into the back of him, and Devereaux just goes off the course, and, uh, well, that's a very, very unfortunate thing that happened to Adrian Devereaux. He was so pumped up about this race, and it looked like, from all the practice sheets, that this was going to be a race that he would just run away with, but it hasn't been the case, and bad luck has once again taken Adrian Devereaux out of the lead. And now, Adrian Devereaux, he's going to continue on, but he is going to be well back in the order. On board Michael Sykes here. Now, I don't think you can blame Arto Kekkonen because there really was not a whole lot of time for Arto to react. The officials agreed and did not give Kekkonen a penalty for that. However, this is something that you can argue that Kekkonen may deserve a penalty for. Michael Sykes is in the lead, Arto right behind him. Through the final chicane and onto the main straight. Still in lap 5, Sykes goes wide, Arto tries to make an ambitious move, hooks the back of the 44 car, and Sykes into the wall. The 44 continues on but has a significant amount of damage. <clears throat> Kakinen obviously tried to make a really quick move after a mistake by Michael Sykes, attempting to be very opportunistic, but it just didn't work. Sykes gets the car loose, goes off the course a bit. Arto tries to get a quick pass in there, but it doesn't really go well. They gave him a time penalty. Uh, they gave Arto Kakinen a time penalty, but uh, they rescinded it on the grounds. And as you see right there, they rescinded it on the grounds that Sykes may have been off the course and they wanted to look at it afterwards. Anyway, Libby Bell is in car number 16 for Kurt Pliskin. She hasn't really shown a whole de a great deal of speed all weekend, but uh, Libby Bell is straight from Arla, and she's actually leading the Arla Championship, I believe. So uh, Bell, not exactly uh, the best start to her main PM Master Cup Series race, her career. Five of the six cars that were sent to the back are charging through the field together, and uh, the Calamity Cousins haven't run into anybody. In fact, they've, this has been some of the best racing so far, is right with the, these five cars. Packer Carroll, Tom Delgado, Ian Cooper, Matthias Taub, and Christian Hans right here. Some great battles between them. They haven't uh, been colliding with anyone. Looks like they've learned after uh, the chaos they caused in England. Jose Luis Martinez pits on lap six. This is a very interesting pit strategy move. Martinez pits very early, and uh, he's going to get out in clean traffic. He's going to have a uh, out in clean air. Now, this would be the battle for the lead, but as uh, well, it would have been the battle for the lead if they kept uh, the penalty for the nine car. But um, this actually is the battle for first. But remember, the fact that they said they were going to look into the incident with Arto Kakinen and Michael Sykes means they could still give the time penalty back to him. But uh, since it looks like they're postponing that decision to the end of the race, uh, we have a good battle for the lead here. Lap 6, Dale Roswell just gets it in too hot, spins off the course, ends his day against the tire barriers. Chris Johans is going to join him. Now, here we are on board the 64. Kevin Dwyer sees Johans, gives him a bit of extra room, but... 
Okay, Johan just lost it all by himself. Roswell looks like he lost it trying not to run into somebody else. Lewis Kingston running in second, in uh, seventh place. Excuse me. He hasn't been very lucky so far this year, but he's been quicker than his teammates on a pretty regular basis. This has uh, not been the case this weekend. Tom Delgado has actually been slightly faster than Kingston, and uh, this this weekend. But still, a good job for Lewis so far. It looks like he's just working on piling on some points, and maybe have a challenge at the championship. Of course, we're still very early in the year. So I wouldn't exactly rule out a title bid for the 17 Bunch if he's able to put consistent points finishes up. Lewis Kingston, the Avenger, having a very strong run so far in the round of France. Back up with Adrian Devereaux. He's back in the race. Two laps down. He is the last car running on track. And as you can see, he's not really racing anyone too hard. Leonid Roderick and Arto Kakinen pitting into lap eight. Hey, don't lose it into the coming into the pits. That would be a little embarrassing. Scott Stoidler and pretty much the rest of the field pit at the same time. You see uh, Luciano Savarol in the red car pitting. On board Arto Kakinen, watch the track. You're going to see a black car go right on by, and that is Jose Luis Martinez. The Katsuv has taken the lead of the race. Martinez, the number seven Yaro car, into P1. Fantastic call by the Katsuv boys to bring Martinez out of traffic and back up into, clean, into a clean running and that's put him in the lead. This strategy move could pay off because Martinez has not been too spectacular outside of the round of England this year. And this could be a very big day for the Mexican. It already is a big day so far because he's leading in a car that I don't think too many people expect to be uh, all that competitive coming in this year, frankly. I thought some, pe some people uh, figured that Martinez was committing career suicide by joining Cats of Engineering. Boy, he's proved, his, he's proved the doubters wrong. Here's Leonid Roderick and Zach Duff doing battle for position along with Matthias Taub in uh, the 10 car. Whoa, we got a car around there. Blake Camphausen in the 15 car. Oh, Taub hit him. Taub, nowhere to go. We're going to see what happened to the 15 car. Wow, Packer Carroll just drove in there way over his head. Hits Lewis Kingston and Blake Camphausen driving 10 feet over his head. Well, I said earlier that Packer Carroll uh, had learned from causing mis uh, crashes in from Brands Hatch. Clearly, that's not the case. He sticks it in three wide, but there's a chicane up there. That's going to narrow out. I think he's had long enough to uh, figure out that that wasn't going to work. But now, here's Matthias Taub. He's running behind Zach Duff, and he really tried to avoid that, but just wasn't enough. He could have probably taken to the grass, but I think Taub knows there's a ditch out there, and I don't think he wants to damage the front of the car by running into it. So, uh, well, here we are again, the aerial shot. Now, Packer just drives in again way too hard, spins out Kingston, takes Kamphausen pretty much out of the race, and he's still trying to wreck Kingston. So I don't know what Packer Carroll has against Lewis Kingston, but that's just way out of line. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving him a time penalty. Quit wrecking cars like a clown. Jack Bouvier is running in fourth place. This is the best hope for the home crown since Rekamir has gone for it has uh, sort of been falling back through the field a bit, and Adrian Devereaux has just had, uh, well, Murphy's Law uh, happen to him all race. It's not been Devereaux's best race, but Jacques Bouvier, way to resurrect a career uh, in that car number 08. Now, here's car number 8. Yulia Nasova has been gradually working her way through the field. Nasova did not qualify very well, qualified 23rd. Her teammate Martinez qualified 25th. Martinez got the lead through strategy, but Nasova's blasting through the field just on pure speed. Here's Morgan Hamburg, the Independence Trophy driver, in the MRD car. 19th place! He came close to winning Independence Trophy twice. I expected a bit more speed from uh, MRD, considering they got an Emoto engine in that car. Avery Holtzman is that 19 car that was challenging Hamburg, and came very close taking both of them out. But Morgan Hamburg doing a good job so far. Here's Luciano Salvaro running in 8th place. This is a pretty good drive seeing from Luciano, considering he also had to start a bit further back, and they haven't really been getting good pit stops at the Corsair, or uh, excuse me, the Colton Merle Altair this weekend. Libby Bell is running in the points in car number 16. Bell and Vijay Pushanda are racing for position, and as you can tell, both of them have uh, kind of gotten together and gone off the racetrack, but the officials ruled that as a racing incident. So uh, it doesn't seem to have affected them too much. They're both uh, running very well. Vijay Pushanda, though, has been an absolute revelation in the Tutino this year. He has had he has had a lot of very strong runs in this 42 car, and uh, I think he's probably feeling pretty good about the rest of the year. Here's Kevin Dwyer making a move around uh, Michael Sykes. They're running running in the points, but uh, not exactly all uh, well towards the front. 
Michael Sykes in a 44 car. Oh, he hooks him! Michael Sykes just dumps Kevin Dwyer, puts him in the sand trap! Michael Sykes again just runs into the back of the 72 car and turns him off the road. I don't know what that was all about, but that was uncalled for as well. Michael Sykes giving a time penalty for that one, and really... Sykes, yeah, I don't know what that was all about. End of lap 13, Jose Luis Martinez hits the pit lane in car number 7, gives up the lead of the race. Nisova now going at Jacques Bouvier for what is now 3rd place. This puts Arto Kekin in car number 9 in the lead of the race, I believe. Uh, Nisova has a run at Bouvier and looks like she's going to get him. Luciano Savarol has entered the, entered the fight now. And who's that? That's, my, that's Mika Turbo in the 20 car, the black car there. The Angry Birds machine. But Nisova in the Aratel Katzim is going to take 3rd. Bouvier trying really hard to get that spot back. Nisova goes off the road. Hits the ditch. Comes back up the track. We got... This is great racing here. Savarol now trying to have a run on the outside of Nisova. They're going to come up and now downhill. Luciano will have the inside. Car three. There he goes. Savarol is going to take over the position. And now he has a run at Bouvier. Now the... I'm kind of surprised they overturned Arto Kakinen's active time penalty and postponed that to the end of the race. I thought that was pretty... Uh, well, pretty obvious that that should be a time penalty, but I think the, but I think the reason they're postponing that is because Carl Richter argued that Michael Sykes was off the track, and they just want to clarify it rather than making uh, a decision too quickly. Here's Scott Soiler having a career resurgence. He's finally capitalizing on the talent and on his talent and the ability of this car. He is clearly not as affected by the pressure of having a good championship result as Chris Johans, and he has really stepped up the plate this year. And I don't think it'll be much of a surprise when he finally captures his second career Master Cup Series victory. Stoidler won, of course, in Australia, driving for Hodges Walter Racing. He left that team, came over to Camelot Racing, and just hasn't gone his way since. Arto Kakinen and Mika Turvo, the two Finns, both pit at halfway. Remember, we're not quite sure if Kakinen will actually finish here, or if he'll be handed the time penalty later. There's the Angry Birds 20 car with Mika Turvo at the wheel. Lewis Kingston pits as well along with Vijay Bushanda, Morgan Hamburg, and Rene Rekamir. There's Hamburg and Rekamir, and uh, Vijay Bushanda. Martinez is back in 14th place, the Mexican driver battling with Ryan Matthews, who is having a great run so far in this race. Here we have car 7 and car 11, er, and uh, car 11, side by side through here. Martinez having a great run so far. Oh, they don't, they touched it. No, I don't think they touched, but Matthews hits the ditch off course. Scott Stoiler pits on lap 16. Yulina Sova, Luciano Savaro, and Jacques Bouvier all follow suit. There you see those three cars. And what do we got here? Ian Cooper running in seventh place, and Tom Delgado running in eighth. Cooper hits the pit lane. Delgado does as well. Delgado, great drive from those two guys. Leonid Roderick also in the pit lane. He's not had great work in the pits. Here is Leonid Roderick in car number four. That's Libby Bell right behind him. Looks like Roderick gets a little crossed up. He slides up the track. Bell hits him. Bell lays on his rear bumper. Roderick had no opportunity to save the car before Libby Bell ran into the back of him again. Uncharacteristically furious after this crash, Leonard Roderick was not interested in talking to reporters, and I can see why here. And here we got the aerial view in slow motion. Roderick slides the car a little bit. This car is obviously very, very loose. Now here we are, coming into this wide sweeping turn. Libby Bell hits the back of the four car. Roderick is now trying to save the car. But now that he saved it, Libby Bell is running into him again and again instead of backing off, which is what anyone sensible would do, and decides to run him clean off the road. I'm not too sure what that was all about, uh, if that was just youthful exuberance or what, but Libby Bell just took Leonard Roderick out of the race, and I don't think that was really sportsmanlike on Libby Bell's part. If you run into the back of someone, give them a little bit of time to save the car, Accidents happen, but when you're laying on someone's bumper like that, I can't really say that's an accident. Here it is again. Bell into, is going to get into Roderick right there. Now just keeps laying on him and just doesn't give the four car enough time to recover that car and continue on. This is the kind of racing we don't need to see in this series. We've seen it in this race and we saw it in England, and frankly, it's getting a little tiresome. Here we are again. Libby Bell and Leonard Roderick. I think we've had enough replays of this already. They're Bell into him once, twice, and then just hooks him. Just hooks the four car, turns him off the road. Power Steering Incorporated has been uh, kind of complaining that they've been unfairly uh, targeted by the officials, but when your cars keep wrecking other cars like that, I don't think there should be any sympathy towards you. Martinez could actually pull this race off if he has enough fuel. The only problem that Martinez is facing right now 
is the cars behind him are actually faster. So Martinez is really going to have to work on saving fuel. It looks like he doesn't quite have the best car on the racetrack, but he is certainly doing a great job. He's under, he clearly understands how strategy works better than just about everybody out there. This is a very risky strategy call, and it's the same kind of strategy call that actually won the round of British Columbia for Marcus Leonard last year. Oh, drops off the track a little bit. That's not going to help. Martinez, a bit underrated, I think. He uh, didn't get enough credit for winning the round of Daytona, in my mind. But um, still, he's having a fantastic run here so far, and I think he's well and truly establishing himself as a top-level driver because the cats of cars have not been the best this year, even though Nasova has done a fantastic job in those cars. But here's Rene Rekimir and Carlos Donzello. Donzello runs off the track, cuts in front of the 12 car, and now Rekimir is not too happy with that, takes both of them into the wall. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. I think Rekimir is probably feeling the pressure from the hometown crowd to perform well, and it just got to him just a little bit. That's my guess, but Donzello runs off the track here. Now, Carlos has gotten hit, and he's not too happy about that. He tries to cut the 12 car off, but Rekimir just drives into the back of him and spins him out in a straight line. Thank you. Another time penalty that was deserved. Aside from Adrian Devereaux, who is two laps down and the last car still running, Yulia Nasova is the quickest car on the racetrack. This car number eight, running in second place, I believe. Is, yes, Nasova's gotten around the nine car. Nasova having a fantastic run so far for Cats of Engineering. Nasova has been very quick. She's actually in contention for the uh, championship lead at the moment. May not take it after this race, but uh, Nasova having a fantastic run so far this season. Yamino Tenshi drives in a bit too hard, gets into Scott Bates. Bates gives Tenshi enough room, and oh, Bates just kind of said, hey, I didn't like that too much, but um, at least you're not uh, seeing too many re too much wrecking. Oh, Bates is done. Scott, I saw smoke coming out of the back of the 88 car. Scott Bates is blown up on lap 20 from 16th place. After some hard racing with Yamino Tenshi, uh, Scott Bates' day is over. Ian Cooper is running in 6th place. Uh, Cooper is having a pretty good day on the Team EFR journey, but in the same part of the racetrack, one lap after his teammate, Cooper's car breaks down. Different mechanical problem takes Cooper out of the race. Here is the 777 car, and that's such a huge disappointment for Cooper. He came all the way from the back of the field to run 6th place before this happened. Yulina Silva, we're here with fending off Arto Kakinen on lap 22. Kakinen challenging for second place in car number 9, Nasova, car 8. Great battle here by these two. Nasova is going to lose the position to Arto Kakinen, it looks like. Kakinen's got the better line coming off the corner, and I believe he's got it. Yes, Arto Kakinen takes second place from Yulina Silva. The Finn, who uh, may be given a time penalty after the race, is going to have a run at Jose Luis Martinez. Now Mika Turvo is beginning to worry Scott Soiler. Turvo has had several good runs in independent trophy cars in his Master Cup Series career. He almost came uh, in the almost finished the top five in the in the round of Great Britain last year before he took himself out of a great run there. Tom Delgado is running in sixth place. Sort of like Ian Cooper. He's had a fantastic drive coming all the way from the back of the field. I don't think too many people thought Delgado was going to be at his best when uh, he came back after those medical problems during the offseason. Clearly, the American Devil is hell-bent on proving the doubters wrong. And he's clearly doing that. He's showing that he's a better driver than what happened at the Round of England on the first lap. And he's bringing his Nomoto in sixth place right now. Martinez on lap 23 pits car number seven. And if he's going to make it all the way to the end on fuel, it's going to be very close. The Mexican's going to have to work very hard. Arto Kekkonen is following that strategy. He pits on lap 24, but Nasova stays out an extra lap. She saved fuel during that run, apparently. Now, that means Nasova could have a shorter pit stop and could gain a lot of ground on Arto Kekkonen uh, when the pit stops cycle out. And she could also gain some ground on her teammate, Martinez. Now, there's Martinez. There's Nasova leaving the pits. Nasova did, was, it was able to have a shorter pit stop it looks like, and she closed the gap on Martinez. The battle is on between the two cats if Nasova looks like she might be in with a shot of winning this thing. Five laps to go, Martinez is in the lead of the race. Nasova is closing in. Car number eight, Yuli Nasova could have a shot of taking her first win since the 2010 round of Russia. Martinez won Daytona last year in very controversial circumstances which saw many cars eliminated by incidents some people felt that martinez only won that race by default and not on talent but now he is close to doing it 
This is a very unique pit strategy that Martinez has taken, and it might give him the race win if he's able to hang on. Yulia Sova is closing. Martinez has shown a great deal of discipline during this race, and that's exactly what he needs. In the closing stages of this race, the Yaro Katsiv is in the lead. Nasova is closing in, though, as I've already said. Great run so far through the field. I'm going to also point out someone that's not on the chart on the left. Morgan Hamburg having a fantastic run in car number 67, the MRD car. Not the fastest car on the track, but he is having a stellar run so far. Going a bit further back, here is Scott Stoidler. He is in position if either or both of the Katsivs run out of fuel. The 74 car is in a position to take his second podium in a row. Great change of form by the uh, American driver Scott Stoidler from Philadelphia. Uh, he is having a great run in the uh, Tremwell there. Going back to fourth place, Luciano Savaral. He's had a great job today. He's had to come through the field. He hasn't had great pit work in this three car, but he has certainly made up for it with a great run on track. Pit stops have relegated Arto Kekin into fifth place, but that's assuming that the time penalty isn't given back to him after the race. Uh, wait a minute, he looks like he's back in sixth place. My, uh, sorry, that is Mika Turvo directly in front of him. So Arto is going to have to race Turvo, who is, uh, actually, I believe, yeah, they are racing for a position right there. So Arto Kekin has got some work to do if he's going to take over fifth position. Now here is Zach Duff in eighth place, finally having a good run in the Xenos. Zach Duff has been, him along with Lewis Kingston, have sort of been the epitome of bad luck. The Xenos cars have really not had, uh, and it ha really haven't had anything go well for them ever since um, the tragic pass of Scott Hamilton last year. But uh, the two black Xenos cars have just had a really rough start to the year. Zach Duff finally looks like he'll be able to turn their fortunes around. Great run so far for him. Avery Holtzman looking for a top 10 after crashing out of his home race. It's been a very canny drive for the Englishman. Avery Holtzman has had a uh, sort of a slow year so far. He hasn't really had a drive anywhere. He's, he just has the European races in the Black Diamond car, and that's it. Jose Luis Martinez is a second and a half slower than Nasova behind him. Uh, he's definitely saving fuel on that car because I don't think he thinks he can make it to the end at this point. But uh, we'll have to see how hard he can push it uh, in that seven car. Clearly, he's not taking too many chances, but... Uh, at the same time, I think this strategy is sort of a, a really big gamble. Martinez is being held up a little bit by Kevin Dwyer, who's he's giving Martinez room, but the 7 is a little slow to get by him. Kevin Dwyer doing a great job at being a, a respectful backmarker when the cards are down. He's doing what he needs to do. He's given Martinez some room to go by, but Martinez is just not taking advantage of that. The 7 car has not made a move to overtake Kevin Dwyer, which I think is a bit straight. Now, there he goes. He's making a move now. Looks like he tried to make the move on the right, but uh, I don't think that move would have worked. Martinez is given the better line for the next corner by Kevin Dwyer. And there you go. It's Kevin Dwyer giving him plenty of room. Very respectful young man, uh, Kevin Dwyer, but uh, just not to be. Isova, on the other hand, has a much easier time getting by Kevin Dwyer, and she gained two seconds on that last lap on her teammate and there you see the gap is really down the Sova is in within striking distance of Martinez in car number seven game on final lap Martinez is in the lead but Nasova is on the charge car number eight Yulia Nasova driving for cats of engineering this team was in the back of the field they were had little chance of even scoring a point on a weekly basis but here they are with a shot of going one two in the round of France Yulia Nasova is charging on Martinez. Martinez still holding on to the lead of the race in, in the Yaro car. There you see in the background that blue and white eight car closing in. He's just got about half a lap to go. Does he have enough fuel to make it? And can he hold off his teammate who is desperate for another win? She has not won in a long time, as I've mentioned, since 2010 in Russia, and the full field wasn't even there. So Nasova eager to win again. But Martinez is as well. Nasova's really closing in on the final lap here. Martinez in the seven car, holding on. Looks like he's give, he's sliding around just a little bit. Those probably unworn tires there. Nasova's really on him now. Just a couple of corners to go. It, is this going to be enough for Martinez? Nasova's right there. She's got one shot to get by him. And it's the final chicane here. As they come on to the final corners, Martinez slides the rear end. 
He's sledding, he's sledding wide. The Silva's alongside as they come down the front straight away. And Yulia Da Silva takes the win on the last corner of the last lap. Da Silva wins in France. A fantastic race. Here it is again. Watch here as Martinez gets in a bit too hot, slides the rear end around. He's fighting for control of that car. Da Silva takes the spot, gives his gives her teammate enough room, and Da Silva takes it in the last stretch in one of the most fantastic races I have ever seen in the TM Master Cup Series. Da Silva, amazing victory by the very popular Russian driver, and Martinez, very gracious in defeat, ran out of fuel before he even made it to turn one. So right after the line, the seven car was out of fuel. He had stretched it to the limit, but it wasn't enough as Nasova takes a fine win after a grueling battle with her teammate. Fantastic stuff here in France. In Katzev's only other TM Master Cup Series victory, they also swept the first two positions. Scott Stoidler completes the podium. Sauverall had a good day. Arto Kekkonen beat Mika Turbo to the line. But if he uh, is given that time penalty again, Arto will wind up about 10th or 11th. Another good effort by the Majestic Motorsports crew, even though it didn't really go their way in the race for Rene Rekamir, Ryan Matthews still pulled out a decent result. Jacques Bouvier, great result there. Great way to resurrect his career. Ditto for Henry Holtzman. Going a bit further back, Morgan Hamburg, great result. Michael Sykes and Charlie Waters would have both finished higher than they did if they just didn't decide to start running into cars. And Craig Mummert ran into Dan McKay, and Mummert would have gotten the final point... But it went to McKay instead, because Mummer got an active time penalty for running into McKay. Funny how those things work. Assuming that time penalty isn't reassessed to Arto Kekkonen, he will have the points lead, leaving the round of France, because he has finished in the top ten every single race. Similarly to last year, Adrian Devereaux has lost points because of how many crashes he's gotten into, and for mechanical difficulties. Luciano Savarol is sort of the same boat. Nasova, Ashby, Stoidler, Martinez, Bates are still in with a realistic shot of the championship. However, I really wouldn't rule anyone out at this point because I still think it's a bit early to say who's going to be in contention for the title. I don't think the Leonard Roderick, Kevin Dwyer, Dale Roswell, Yamino Tenchi, and Michael Sykes fans have too much to worry about. Winning the championship for those drivers is still possible, they just need to really up their game. And if last year is any indication, that is very, very possible. And having a look at the Independence Trophy, Mika Turbo has taken over the lead. But Fintech kind of has a history of building up a big lead on the Independence Trophy and somehow managing to lose it. So if I was Mika Turbo, I don't think I'd necessarily be feeling good about that. Turbo will be back in the next race along with his teammate Carlos Donzello, Troy Adams in the 91 car, and Gaspar D'Souza in round 6 of the 2012 TM Master Cup Series season, the Round of Sweden.